things that are useful to your fellow human beings, to the world, it's very hard to be useful. If you have ever backed a pickup truck into a tight parking spot, you know the feeling. You are creeping in. You are watching your mirrors. You are guessing inches. Now imagine doing that with a building that is falling out of the sky. That is what SpaceX is trying to do with the Starship booster. The booster is called Super Heavy. It is the big bottom part of the rocket. It is about 230 feet tall. That is like a 20-story building. When it comes back to Earth, it does not use legs. It does not land on a big concrete pad. Instead, it gets caught by the launch tower. The tower has two giant metal arms. People call them chopsticks. They close around the booster and hold it in the air. This is a new way to fly. Most rockets just fall into the ocean and are gone forever. That is like throwing away a whole airplane after just one flight. It is very expensive. To make space travel cheap, you have to use the same rocket over and over. That is why the catch is so important. SpaceX does not tell the public everything. They keep some data secret. They do not show the exact distance between the booster and those arms right before they touch. There is no public counter on the screen for those last few inches. This data is called telemetry. It is like a heart monitor for the rocket. SpaceX shares some of it. They keep a lot private. We have to use engineering clues to figure out how it works. The catch is not about hitting the exact center of the arms. It is more like hitting a window. Think of a window as a safe box in the air. This safe box is about 60 to 70 feet long from front to back. That is about the length of a city bus. Side to side, the safe box is about 40 feet wide. That is like two full-size pickup trucks parked side by side with their doors open. The rocket it has to steer itself into that box while falling very fast. The booster uses small wings at the top to steer. They look like grid fins. They work like the steering wheel on your car, but they work with the air. As the booster falls, the air pushes against these fins. This moves the rocket left or right. As it gets closer to the ground, it fires its engines to slow down. This is called a landing burn. It is like slamming on the brakes before you hit a wall. The booster has 33 engines at the bottom. These are called Raptor engines. For the catch, it only uses a few of them. These engines are special. They can change their power level smoothly. This is called throttling. It is like the gas pedal in your car. You can press it a little or a lot. These engines can go from 40% power up to 100% power. Most older rockets cannot do this. Older engines are like a light switch. They are either all the way on or all the way off. If you are trying to land, you need small adjustments. It is like trying to balance a broomstick on your finger. You need to make tiny moves to keep it from falling. Raptor engines let the rocket do that. The cost of doing things the old way is very high. Look at the SLS rocket built by NASA. One SLS launch costs $4.1 billion. That is $4.1 billion with a B. To put that in perspective, that is enough money to buy every person in a mid-sized city a brand new car. It is a huge amount of your tax dollars. SpaceX wants to make Starship cost much less. They think it will cost about $10 million per launch once it is working perfectly. Let us compare those two numbers. One SLS launch costs 410 times more than one Starship launch. You could launch Starship every single day for over a year for the cost of just one SLS flight. When you want to build a base on the moon, you need a lot of supplies. You need water, food, and air tanks. If each trip costs $4 billion, you will run out of money very fast. If it costs $10 million, you can go as often as you want. This is a competition of efficiency. Boeing is another company that has struggled with this new way of working. Their Starliner spacecraft has had many problems. On its last flight with people, it had issues with its small steering engines. This Starliner failure meant the astronauts could not come home on the Boeing ship. They had to stay at the space station for months. They had to wait for a SpaceX ship to go pick them up. 
This shows a big difference in how companies work today. Some companies move slowly and spend a lot of money. They follow old rules. SpaceX moves fast and is willing to fail during tests. They built their tower arms to be strong but smart. The arms only close when multiple computer checks all say yes. It is not just one sensor. It is many sensors. They all have to agree that the rocket is in the right spot. If even one thing looks wrong, the arms stay open. The booster will then steer itself away from the tower. It will fall into the ocean instead. This is called a splashdown. SpaceX plans to do many splashdowns on purpose. They want to gather data without breaking their expensive tower. It is like practicing a play in football before the big game. You want to know exactly where everyone is going to be. The tower is very tall. It is about 480 feet high. That is like a 45-story building. It is the tallest rocket tower in the world. It has to be that tall to reach the top of the rocket. The arms move up and down on rails. They use giant cables and motors to lift the rocket. This system is designed to be fast. They want to catch a booster, put it back on the launch pad, and fuel it up again quickly. They want to do this in just a few hours. Right now, it takes months to get a rocket ready to fly again. If they can do it in hours, they can fly thousands of times a year. That would be more than 20 times a week. There is a race going on right now. It is a race to the moon. The United States wants to land people there by 2026 or 2027, but China is working hard too. China says they will land people on the moon by 2030. For a long time, the US was far ahead, but NASA has had many delays. Their own experts say the 2026 date might not happen. It might be pushed back again. China has been very good at hitting their dates. Their space station was built on time. Their moon robots landed on time. If the U.S. keeps having delays, China might get there first. This matters for leadership in the world. It is a scoreboard that everyone is watching. To win, the U.S. needs cheap and fast rockets like Starship. The old way of spending billions of your tax dollars on one flight is too slow. The Raptor engines are a big part of why SpaceX is winning. These engines use methane fuel. Methane is basically the same as the natural gas you use in your stove at home. Most older rockets use kerosene. Kerosene is like jet fuel. It is very dirty when it burns. It leaves behind black soot inside the engines. This makes it hard to use the engine again. You have to take it apart and clean it. Methane burns very clean. It does not leave soot behind. This means you can land the rocket and fly it again almost immediately. It is like the difference between a wood stove and a gas stove. The gas stove stays clean. The wood stove gets covered in ash. To fly a rocket every day, you need it to stay clean. SpaceX engineers are are very good at pattern recognition. They look at every test and find small ways to improve. If a valve leaks, they change the design. If a sensor fails, they add a backup. They are constantly making the rocket better. This is different from the way Boeing or NASA usually works. Those groups often spend years planning and then build one perfect version. If it fails, they are in big trouble. SpaceX builds many versions. They are currently building several boosters and several towers at the same time. This is strategic intelligence. They know that having backups allows them to take risks. If one booster crashes, they have another one ready to go next week. This is why they are moving so much faster than everyone else. The software on the rocket is also very smart. It makes decisions in a fraction of a second. As the booster comes down, the software checks the wind. If the wind wind is too strong, it cancels the catch. Strong gusts of wind can push the rocket into the tower. That would be a disaster. The tower arms have strict limits. They can only move so fast. If the rocket is moving too much, the arms will not try to grab it. If communication with the rocket drops for even a short time, the catch is canceled. The system is designed to say no more often than it says yes. This is how you survive the early days of testing. You have to know when not to try.
The booster can land softly on water without exploding because the engines slow it down to zero. It just tips over and floats. This allows them to fish parts out of the water to see how they handled the heat. The heat is a big problem. When a rocket comes back from space, it is moving very fast. It hits the air like a wall. This creates a lot of friction. Friction creates heat. The temperature can reach 3,000 degrees. That is hot enough to melt steel. To protect the rocket, they use heat shield tiles. These look like black ceramic bricks. They are made of a special material that does not let heat through. There are about 18,000 tiles on the Starship. Each one is a slightly different shape. It is like a giant jigsaw puzzle. If tiles fall off, the metal underneath can melt. We saw this in earlier tests where some parts of the ship burned through. SpaceX is now using better ways to hold the tiles on. They are also making the metal skin of the rocket thicker in some spots. Let us talk about the scale of the money again. The SLS rocket costs $4.1 billion per flight. That is enough money to pay for about 100,000 students to go to college for free. When you think about justice and consequences, you have to ask if the money is being used well. If one company can do the same job for a fraction of the price, why are we still paying for the expensive one? The answer is usually politics. Different parts of the old rocket are built in different states. This keeps jobs in those states, but it makes the rocket very slow to build. SpaceX builds almost everything in one place in Texas. This is much faster. They can change a part in the morning and fly it in the afternoon. The booster catch is a demonstration of technical mastery. No one else has even tried this. Other companies are still trying to land rockets on legs. Legs are heavy. They take up space on the rocket that could be used for fuel or cargo. By getting rid of the legs, SpaceX can carry more weight. This booster can carry 100 tons to space. That is as heavy as 15 fully loaded pickup trucks. If you add legs, you might only be able to carry 80 tons. That is a big loss. The goal is to get as much stuff to space as possible for the lowest cost. The catch is the key to that. Future towers might have even wider arm ranges. This would give the rocket a bigger window to hit. It would make the catch safer and easier. The software can also be updated. They can change the rules for the catch without changing any of the metal hardware. This is how modern technology works. It is like your smartphone getting an update that makes the camera better. The hardware stays the same, but the brain gets smarter. In a few years, missed catches will be rare. The data will improve. The engineers will gain confidence. The ocean will always be there as a backup plan, but the goal is clean catches every time. The booster is made of stainless steel. Most rockets are made of aluminum or carbon fiber. Stainless steel is much cheaper. It is also very good at handling high heat. Aluminum melts easily. Carbon fiber can crack. Steel is tough. It is also easy to weld. You can fix a steel rocket with a simple welding tool. You cannot do that with carbon fiber. This makes the rocket easier to maintain. It is built to be a workhorse, not a museum piece. They want to be able to fly it, land it, wash it, and fly it again. We have seen what happens when things go wrong. The Starliner failure showed that even big old companies can make mistakes. They spent billions of dollars and years of time, but the ship still had big problems. It shows that the old way of doing things is not always safer. Sometimes moving slowly just means you are slow to find your mistakes. SpaceX finds their mistakes quickly by flying often. They would rather have a rocket explode during a test than have it fail when people are on board. This is a different philosophy. It is about learning through action. The United States needs to stay ahead of China in the moon race. China is building their own giant rockets. They are also looking at how to reuse them. If they figure out how to catch rockets before we do, the moon has resources like water ice. Water can be turned into rocket fuel. This would make the moon a gas station for the rest of the solar system. Whoever gets there first and builds a base will control that resource. This is resource protection. It is a strategic move for the future of humanity. The chopsticks are not reckless tools. They are cautious tools. They only act when everything is lined up perfectly. If not, they step aside. The booster takes the long way home into the water. 
This is the real story of Starship. It is not just about whether the arms grab the metal. It is about whether the system is smart enough to know when to stop. That is how you build a reliable transportation system. You design it to fail safely. Like the seat belts in your car, you hope you never need them, but you are glad they are there. When the booster comes in for a catch, the sound is incredible. It is a deep roar that you can feel in your chest. The engines push against the ground and create a huge cloud of dust and steam. The rocket looks like it is hovering for a moment. It is balancing on a needle of flame. Then the arms swing in. They don't grab it like a hand. They support it under small pins on the side of the rocket. Once the rocket is secure, the engines shut off. The fire disappears. The rocket is just hanging there. 20 stories in the air. It is a sight that looks like science fiction, but it is real. Every time they fly, they learn more about the Raptor engines. These engines use a complex cycle to get as much power as possible. They pump fuel and oxygen at very high pressures. This makes them very efficient. They get more push for every pound of fuel than almost any other engine in history. This efficiency is what allows the rocket to be so big. If the engines were weak, the rocket could not carry its own weight. It is a masterpiece of engineering. And because they are building them on an assembly line, they are getting cheaper every day. The total cost comparison is the most important part of the story. If we want to live on other planets, we cannot do it at $4 billion a flight. We have to do it for millions, not billions. Starship is the only project that is trying to reach that goal. The SLS is a great rocket, but it is an old design. It uses parts from the space shuttle. It was designed to use up old parts and keep old jobs. It was not designed to be cheap or fast. Starship was designed from a blank sheet of paper to be the most efficient machine ever built. As we look at the next few years, we will see more towers being built. There is already a second tower at the Texas launch site. There are plans for towers in Florida too. Each one will be a little better than the last. The arms will move smoother. The sensors will be sharper. We are watching the birth of a new era in flight. It is like watching the first trains or the first airplanes. At first, it looks dangerous and strange. People think it is impossible, but then it becomes normal. One day, catching a 20-story building out of the air will be a routine thing. It will happen every day. The competitive scoreboard is clear. SpaceX is launching more than anyone else in the world. They are launching more than entire countries. This year, they will likely launch over 140 times. That is more than twice every single week. No one else is even close. This high flight rate is what allows them to improve so fast. If you only fly once a year, you only learn one lesson a year. If you fly twice a week, you learn a hundred lessons. This is why the gap between SpaceX and everyone else is getting wider. They are simply outworking everyone. In the end, this is about building a future where space is open to everyone. It is about making the cost of a trip to orbit the same as a high-end plane ticket. To do that, you need a rocket that works like a plane. You don't throw away a plane after you land. You taxi to the gate, let the people off, and gas it up for the next trip. That is what the chopsticks and the super heavy booster are all about. It is the gate at the airport. It is the tool that makes the whole system work. It is the future of how we will leave this planet and explore the stars. It is a bold plan, but it is working. The data shows it, the tests show it, and soon the history books will show it too. 